Hi everyone, this is Andrew Hoffman. For those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. For those of you that are returning, glad that you're back. Today's video is about a new upcoming and currently experimental security feature that could revolutionize application security. And this feature is called Trusted Types. By the end of this video, you'll understand not only what is Trusted Types, but how do you implement Trusted Types? What type of benefit does it give you in terms of security posture, in particular in regards to cross-site scripting, which is what it's designed to mitigate? And why would you want to use Trusted Types versus using other forms of cross-site scripting XSS mitigations? So we jump on over to MDN and we can see that CSP Trusted Types now has its own category, however, it is marked as an experimental technology. If we jump to browser compatibility, we'll see that this new cross-site scripting mitigation is available for Chrome and Edge and Opera, but not yet for Firefox, Safari, and a few other web browsers. There is, however, a shim that you can download directly from W3C on their GitHub page if you want to implement trusted types anywhere else aside from the currently supported browsers. So I jumped ahead and now I'm looking at the official specification for trusted types. And it's important that you understand how trusted types works because it works differently than any existing mitigation against cross-site scripting attacks. See, historically the way in which cross-site scripting was tackled was by sanitizing user inputs prior to those inputs finding an XSS sync. Now, this is a game of cat and mouse that's almost impossible to win. So trusted types works a little bit differently. Rather than trying to sanitize every sync, the browser vendor, in this case Google, who is spearheading this security initiative, works together with the specification and they define every known cross-site scripting sync into the browser. Now, inst instead of blocking these or sanitizing their inputs on a one-off basis, Trusted Types defines three new objects in the browser, in the JavaScript, world of JavaScript. And this is gonna be the trusted script URL, the trusted script, and the trusted HTML. Now, if Trusted Types is enabled, right when you boot up your browser, what's gonna happen is every single location, every XSS sync in your browser that contains HTML will have its object type replaced with trusted HTML. The same for script and the same for script URLs. Now, how does trusted HTML script or script URL differ from the default implementation? Well, it's actually pretty simple. By default, anytime you try to access one of those syncs with trusted types enabled, the access will fail and will throw an error in the browser console, unless you define what is known as a policy. A trusted types policy allows you to write code to determine how a specific XSS sync handles inputs. This is a great opportunity to selectively whitelist not only a small handful of XSS syncs, but also the type of data that can be put into those XSS syncs. Think of it as something akin to a JavaScript proxy. Now you see in the page right here, I have a DOM XSS vulnerability. And on the right hand side, you'll note that window.location.hash is set to alert one. Pay attention to the one. Now when I do a on mouse over, the XSS occurs, we have script execution and one pops up in the alert dialog. Now trusted types is not enabled currently on this website. I'll do it a few more times and reload the page just to show that this is consistent behavior as you'd expect, the code is very simple. On the left hand side, we have that document.query selector. It's grabbing the window.location.hash and running an eval on mouse over. Now I'm uncommenting the content security policy require trusted types for script. And you'll see when I reload the page, I now get an error in the JavaScript console every time I mouse over. That's because all of these XSS syncs have been disabled by default once you enable the trusted types feature. Again, trusted types disables all known XSS syncs by default. Now these have to be enabled selectively afterwards. Now, how do we do that? Well, like I mentioned earlier, we need to create a policy. So here I have the sn snippet of JavaScript code that says window.trustedtypes 
and trusted types create policy so I'm just checking to see if trusted types is enabled in the browser that's something you need to check right now but in the future you might not have to check this when the amount of browsers that support trusted types has expanded so once we know that the browser supports trusted types we can make a call to window.trustedtypes.createPolicy, pass a name of the policy, we can have multiple policies, and then for each of those three new objects, script, HTML, and URL script, we can create a policy which takes three parameters. Now the parameters are value, type, and source. You'll see right here, if I return the value, the value is the input, in this case, one. So just like a proxy, this trusted types policy is intercepting the data that's going to hit the XSS sync and we're passing it through via value. Now if I console.log you'll see the middle parameter type is the type of object that has replaced that sync and the final parameter is the sync itself by name. In this case it's the eval operator that is operating in order to create this script. So what I can do is I can do a check and I can say if eval will return alert and will change the contents of the alert. So in the window.location.hash, aka the source of this DOM-based cross-site scripting attack, the only parameter in the alert is one. Now we're changing it to a custom input. And we're doing this to show the fact that trusted types gives us the capacity to allow particular XSS syncs and to filter their data one by one. So we turn everything off, one by one we enable it, and as we enable it, we can even filter the content that goes through by defining a trusted types policy. As you can see, trusted types allows you to protect against cross-site scripting attacks in a secure by default manner. So it's flipping the browser cross-site scripting model. Instead of doing one-off blocking of XSS syncs, or trying to filter all of the data that goes into a particular XSS sync and then finding the next sync, etc. You disable them all and you enable them selectively as is considered to be the best design pattern for security mechanisms, aka secure by default design pattern.